Hey, what's up? Dave with Brazos Valley Strength. Today will probably be my last educational video for about a month or so. Um, I'm heading into Raw Nationals here in just over two weeks. So next week will be my training wrap up from all the, the training that I've been doing heading into the meet, obviously. And then the following week, week or so after the competition will be my training review little vacation, and then back to regular videos again. So uh, definitely still gonna be stuff coming. And in reviewing most of the videos that I've made recently, I realized I actually have only made one bench press video on this new channel. I think there's tons of old bench press content that I think is pretty good for me in my old channel, but I wanted to make sure that we're still putting up good content here as well, as well as trying to come up with kind of a reference guide for when I actually do make the how to bench press complete guide. So if you've seen those other videos, the squat guide and the sumo deadlift guide, you'll know that those videos obviously are pretty long on their own, but even then I'm relying on a little bit of, uh, you know, previous work that I've done to fill in gaps and some details that, that really just are not able to, as far as time, those, those videos would just be way, way too long. So I'm gonna be starting to make a lot more bench press videos, starting today. So today's video, we're gonna be talking about a sinking bench press, sinking the bar into your chest, versus a more soft touch on your chest. So I'm just gonna refer to them that way, sinking press or soft touch. But what we mean there is that either we are trying to get the bar to touch on your chest and even just maybe even your t-shirt, as lightly as possible versus sinking the bar into your chest and trying to get some rebound, some pop off your chest. There's obviously going to be some middle ground there, right? It's not just sink it as far as you can or do a very soft touch. And so I think that, that it's gonna be important that when I'm talking about sinking the bar into your chest, it shouldn't be something that, that's it's super dramatic. Uh, I, I talked about this a little bit in my leg drive video, and I'm gonna touch on some of those things here. But there's there's going to be a scale, you know, as far as how much that you uh, you can actually sink the bar into your chest and be productive. And we'll talk about some of the things that really add up there. But I think for the most part, I'm gonna try to keep it simple as far as the degree in which you're sinking. Um, and, and then from there, you'll have to kind of expand on it on your own with if you're doing a little bit of a softer touch, even when you're sinking, or if you're sinking it dramatically and really how those things kind of impact your bench press. So. What I'll say here, maybe you know the, the bias right off the start, is that I do a sinking bench press. And maybe even a good point to, before we even really get going with the video, is that sinking is allowed. Sometimes, sometimes I get weird comments on Instagram where people are, are interested. If it's allowed, it is. The rule is that the bar can sink as far as you want to into your body. Right, if you're in the USAPL or the IPF, your head can't come up and other federations it can. But either way, the bar can sink as far as you want into your body, but you only get a press command when the bar is motionless. So if the bar is continuing to sink, bar's not motionless, you're not gonna get a press command. Once you get the press command, the bar cannot sink any further. So for it to be called a heave, you can sink it as far as you want as long as it presses smoothly off your chest. But if you sink it in and then you get a press command and it goes down further and you pop it, that's where it becomes illegal. So for sure, you can't heave the bar, you can't go down and then up once you get the press command. Beyond that, however much you wanna sink is, is fair game here. So a lot of what I'm gonna talk about later in the video is gonna be kind of observational. Um, I'm gonna talk about who this is going to really work the best for and who it won't for, kind of which, which styles are going to fit best. But a lot of that is personal experience with athletes that I coach, kind of observations with lifters. There absolutely are exceptions to this, right? So of course there's going to be bench pressers on, on all sides of the spectrum that kind of stand out. But generally speaking, when I talk about the observational stuff and who this will fit best for, I, I think that it will probably hold true, generally speaking, um, but you know, certainly if you're somebody who feels best outside of the stuff that I say, definitely that can help. So what we wanna look at um, is just the benefits of either style. And 
I think that my bias here is that generally speaking, more people do better by sinking the bar at least a little bit into their chest than they do with a very soft touch on their chest once they get good at it. I think that that's probably a, a, big, uh, a big criteria for this. And the bench press is unique in that we do have the ability down at the bottom of the rep to use some momentum, to use your body to help assist the bar getting going, right? Like there, there's no other lift, squats and deadlifts don't have that ability. I guess to some degree, bigger guys get that on squats to where they can use their body to create a little bit more rebound. And I think that that would probably aid my argument here is that some of the, one of the biggest reasons that some of the bigger guys squat significantly more than they do is because their body helps them down at the bottom to actually get moving. And so I think if we're not at least aware of that being an option, that sinking the bar into our body and then using our legs and body to kind of pop the bar off our chest, if we're not at least taking that into account, we're probably missing a big part of what could aid in success for a lot of people. But there are some drawbacks. And I think newer lifters probably need to learn how to do a softer touch and control the bar a little bit more and work on you know maintaining their leverages a little bit better before moving into this. Now, I don't think that sinking the bar is that advanced of a technique but I think that it requires a good understanding of what makes the bench press technique good in the first place. So we'll look at that. So the reason why I think that many newer lifters should probably start off with a softer touch and probably tend to do a little bit better with a softer touch is that they do a better job of maintaining tension with their arms stacked to the barbell. So what I think the main problem is that when newer lifters kind of we'll say sloppier technique on bench press where the issue has problems with the sink is that down at the bottom if they sink it too far or just don't maintain good rigidity that they lose the bar towards their hips that they're not able to keep themselves underneath the bar in a way to actually where they maintain leverage steve Novi just made a, a video this last week about like you know what good technique is and i i think you know that one resonated with me a little bit because Every video that I've made for the last little while, all the, the stuff about you know deadlifts and forward bands and then even like my um, squat shoe video and all those, basically I've been saying the same thing is that we're trying to maintain our center of mass. And Steve, that's like his whole video essentially. And that's still the concept here. But we have you know options down there in order to create that power, the, the strength in the best way possible. But if we're not maintaining our center of mass, our, our leverage over the barbell, then all is lost. So if you get down to the bottom and when you try to sink the bar, the bar moves towards your hips, you kinda, you really struggle, things get sloppy, you're inconsistent with how the bar is coming off your chest, then it might be worth trying for a little bit, maintaining a little bit more tension, keeping the bar in control in your, your chest, pausing a little bit longer. And we'll come back to that because that kind of goes in both directions. But working on a very consistent and controllable, repeatable bar path will probably help most people. So that is, I think, where people should, should look at first. If you're struggling sinking the bar into your chest, look at what happens in the bottom. I, I'm gonna have videos coming soon about like wrist position and things like that to keep the bar from dumping off your body. Off your, uh, off your arms, I have an old video, I think it's just called Dumping in the Bench Press, and I think that's still a, a very good video. But the concepts are the same here, is that, that down at the bottom, if you are losing control and struggling to come up, most likely the bar is getting too far towards your hips, and you're just not in a good position to be able to press the bar smoothly and maintain that connection. So doing soft touches can really, really help. On the other side of it, sinking the bar in your body has the distinct advantage of actually being able to use your body, use your legs, use the mass of your body to propel the bar off your chest and get a boost that you wouldn't otherwise. But I think that those advantages are going to be more profound within certain groups. And so that I think is probably one of the best ways to actually look at this concept. is just to look at the body types, the populations that do well with either one and I think that that can really help demonstrate 
why people, why some people are better with certain styles than others. So I think the best place to start with this is actually the soft touch. And, and we'll use the soft touch as um, maybe, maybe the standard here, I guess, um, and, and then use all the comparisons coming back to the soft touch. So what I would say is that generally speaking, the people who do better by just lightly touching the bar on their chest are wide grip benchers, people with very good, very big arches, and then generally kind of smaller lifters and even potentially more female lifters tend to kind of fit in this category where the soft touches tend to be a little bit better. Where on the other side of the spectrum, the people who tend to do a little bit better on average sinking the bar in their chest are lifters who lay a little bit more flat on their backs, people with closer grips and significantly bigger lifters, right? So if we look at those, I think that the, the advantages uh, or, or kind of you know, what's happening become a little bit more clear looking at that. We'll use Sean Noriega. Sean Noriega actually did use to sink the bar a considerable amount. I'll see if I can find any videos to demonstrate here. But Sean used to sink the bar a lot on his bench press and has gotten significantly better benching with a very, very soft touch. Sean is an interesting lifter, obviously, with the way that he benches because his range of motion is so, so short and his arch is so pronounced. So for him, the advantages that he gets by using some momentum to get the bar moving off his chest do not outweigh the advantages that he gets by reducing the range of motion, right? So the range of motion for him is dramatically less by doing a soft touch. That's not true for people who have very big arches. And I, I don't have a, you know, any sort of data to back up where that changes, right? My arch is not a very small arch. It, it's, it's, I mean, I think I arch pretty effectively to create tension and everything, but the differences even in my grip width and everything just are not very much depending on where I put my hands. The, the range of motion is going to be sizable no matter what. So for me, I don't get that advantage that Sean gets, that the dramatic reduction in range of motion helps him significantly. Also, big arch, wide grip. Uh, I, I wouldn't call him a small guy, but you know, an 82 and a half kilo lifter is, you know, middle of the road, maybe on the, on the smaller side. But somebody like Sean clearly benefits from that. And so we see many, many people with his style do significantly better. We're on the other side, we see, you know, the, the strongest bench pressers in the world, you know, re regardless of body weight or whatever, you know, Julius Maddox or whoever, you know, bench pressing seven, 800 pounds, clearly are sinking the bar in their chest, not arches or anything, just kind of flat back, but their bodies give them significantly more pop off their chest than what a smaller lifter would, right? If we take a, you know, a 60 kilo lifter, 60 kilo female or whatever, um, with a, with a eh, we'll even give a medium sized arch or whatever, that human is not going to get nearly the same pop off of her chest, his chest, without th the same pop that a humongous person, Julius Maddox, Ray Williams or whoever get by sinking the bar into their bodies. So that's, that's probably a really good place to look at is just, is the reduction in range of motion helping you more than the pop, the rebound potential that you get from your body? So that, that I think is probably the strongest factor here. I think that correlates between the two groups or maybe it's a combination of factors there. It's just body size, um, grip, width, and uh, just the, the, range, the total range of motion that people have. So I would say that as a starting point, if you are in any of those groups, if you're a bigger person, smaller person, you may start in the category that I kind of put you in, right? And see if that ends up getting you more success. But I do think that more people probably fall into kind of the middle ground where they're not humongous people. They're not yeah, really short range of motion benchers. And then there we have a whole lot more options. So how do we decide within that group really what is going to fit people the best? And I've, I've mentioned already that I, I think that probably more people should be sinking the bar once they get good enough at the bench press. And I think I really feel that way pretty strongly. One of the main, a few of the main reasons would be that tends to be more consistent in competitions. A lot of this tends to come from 
the fact that bench pressers who sink the bar into their chest can do a lot better with longer pauses, right? So we see many of these very soft touch benchers, Sean is one of them, sometimes have difficulty in competitions because the pause is not on his timing. Even if the pause is not super long, that, that perfect timing, the length of the pause, all of that stuff can really factor in to making it significantly more difficult for him. And many of the other soft touch benchers tend to have some of these issues, even, even just maintaining their arch to keep their chest as high as they possibly can. I mean, we, we see issues with like the floor slipping and things like that. I mean, it all comes down to essentially just perfection in their posture. So if we're sinking the bar, if we're using a little bit more uh, brute force or whatever with, uh, with the lift, it tends to be that that doesn't need quite the perfect amount of variables, pause length, to be able to overcome that. If you're sinking the bar in your chest, we're not actively having to hold that. And we can overcome that with a lot of the stuff with our, with our body using the bar to pop it off our body. And we're just supporting the bar with our body. So I do think that if both technique is, is equal for you, if you have the exact same strength, either sinking the bar into your chest a little bit or doing a very soft touch, most likely you'll end up having more reliable meat performances just because you remove a good number of the issues that are going to create problems for you with the soft touch. Now, another anecdote, another reason why I tend to prefer the soft touch is in general, I think it tends to beat people up a little bit less. So, especially for me, I mean, this is, this is a, for sure a bias from my end. Whenever I do soft touch bench press, even like touch and go bench press or anything, tempo bench, whatever, anything that really requires me to spend a lot of time working around my chest, holding the bar steady there, I tend to get very beat up in my pecs, you know, kind of bicep, tendon kind of stuff. And I really just cannot tolerate it very much at all. And whenever I'm doing a good job of sinking the bar into my chest and maintaining that good rhythm and using some timing to get the bar to move off my chest, my upper body feels significantly better and my bench press stronger. So when I'm able to do that well, I stay a little bit more healthy and my bench press just goes better overall. And I think that that has tended to be a pretty good pattern for a lot of people. And it's, it's almost sort of ironic is that myself and other people who do the sinking presses, whenever they start to let, we get a little bit overworked and things kind of start to get beat up, we lose a little bit of our timing. We lose a little bit of our rhythm. And then we start kind of going towards the soft touch because we're kind of tentative and, and then we get beat up a little bit more and it kind of turns into a vicious cycle. But that still goes back to even like my last video is, is choosing some of these variations that encourage you to keep that timing appropriate and encourage you to, to use the technique that you know is best for you. So anyway, those two things on their own, I think are pretty strong drivers for me to encourage people to use a softer touch or to use a sinking touch on their bench press is the consistency and the potential longevity from doing it. Now I do think that it can certainly be taken too far. And some of this technique stuff that I talked about early in the video absolutely can show up here when we, when we sink the bar way too far into our chest, even people who are good at it and kind of understand what they're going after. When we sink the bar way too far into our chest and lose that ability to stay connected to the bar, we're absolutely just only relying on our ability to pop the bar off our chest and have perfect timing. And that's probably not very good either. So I talked about it in the leg drive video a little bit, and I would definitely encourage you if you want more information on all the stuff that goes into your, your leg drive and how the body actually plays a part in the sink, watch that video. Again, I don't have time to, to completely go into it here, but when we are getting the bar onto our body, there's a spectrum of how much tension we can release from our arms and from our bodies. Just kind of making numbers up. I would say, I, I guess they're not made up, they're thought about a little bit, but off the top of my head here. Generally speaking, when I get the bar into my body, when I'm sinking the bar, I would say I'm maintaining 80% of the tension that I have in my arms. And sometimes you can even see on my bench presses kind of accidentally that my hands will kind of move a little bit. 
I'm not doing that on purpose. It, it's not something that I, I am actively doing. Um, but I do think that it, it shows up when I'm doing a good job of committing the bar into my body. I, I don't think that it's something that you should try to do necessarily, but I think it's something that I, I have done in warmups as a process of cueing myself to get the bar to get into my body a little bit. And then that habit kind of shows up at the top end. I've never felt it affect me at all in any way as far as strength, but it just shows I am releasing some tension down there at the bottom from my arms in order to get the bar into my body. As far as my body and the rest of my legs, I'm releasing some tension there too. If I'm during my descent, I'd say I'm probably, you know, driving with my legs 80 to 90% to maintain my leverage towards the barbell. But once I get it onto my chest, I want to do my best to maintain that posture, but also get enough drive from my legs off my chest in order to actually create some rebound. And so I think this is an area where people mess up a lot is that they either just get the bar in their chest and relax completely and then try to really pop the bar and their hips come up and it's just a sloppy mess. That technique is, isn't going to work. But if you don't really relax at all, if you don't let the body or let your body, your legs relax some, you're not going to get the fullest benefit you possibly can. Now, how much is too much? It's gonna take some trial and error. Uh, I think some people definitely relax significantly more than me. I would say I, if I keeping my tension on my legs about 80-ish percent during the descent, I'd say I release it down to, you know, 60-ish percent and then try to drive fully off my chest to help get the bar back over my shoulders and to really get a little bit of extra pop. So absolutely, there's some personal preference that goes into this, but I think that there's some clear advantages to be had as long as you can do a good job of maintaining your, your uh, center of mass, maintaining your connection to the barbell. So as far as how to get the most out of every either variation, I think if you're a soft touch bencher, again, emphasizing variations that really make you good at that. Doing things like spoto presses to where you don't even touch your chest, but you have to pause down there for a while and really control it. Tempo bench, really working very, very hard during the descent to maintain your tension. Obviously long pauses will fit into both groups. For the long pause benches on soft touch, I think it's absolutely critical that those people are just able to be able to fight for those longer pauses. It will probably affect you more than what it would when you're doing a sinking touch. On the other side, if you're sinking your bench press, three count pauses are one of the absolute best variations there are for it, for reasons I've mentioned in previous videos, but getting you to commit to getting the bar into your chest and just getting you comfortable that you can pause for a long time and that it doesn't make a big difference. And three count pause bench, long pause bench press, I think is one of the best variations for getting people's uh, timing better if they're trying to learn, if they're trying to see if a sinking touch on their bench press will help them more. Do long pauses, let yourself get, get comfortable with the bar sinking in your body and try to find how much you can release tension, how much tension you need to maintain. But either way, it, it'll definitely encourage you to do some of those things and, and really help out. So. There's a lot of things that work, even close grip bench press um, can again help kind of with the timing and touch point and all of those kind of things. But there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of ways that you can really go into it. And I think maybe even starting with my body types may be a good way to lead you in the right direction as far as variations that will help for you. But generally speaking, committing on the descent for the soft touch, sinking touch, and then doing more work on the descent will help people with the soft touch. So anyway, if this video is informative, give it a thumbs up. If you uh, want to see some of this more bench press comment or uh, these, these videos coming in the next few months, please subscribe to the channel. I have a lot of stuff coming down the road, really not just on bench press. It's going to be all sorts of stuff as well as obviously the raw national stuff. So subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and we'll see you next time.